Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Trishana, but you guys can call me Trish. To those of you who are new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And to those of you who have been here since day one, welcome back, heart of love. <laughs> In today's video, I want to talk to us about why it is so important for us to be consistent. And also just want to encourage you all to not give up whatever it is that you're doing for the Lord in your life you know don't give up because there's a reward that comes with being consistent all right so this was something that the Lord laid on my heart about two weeks ago and what he was communicating to me is that a lot of us we miss out on the blessing because we gave up too quickly you know we tend to start things without finishing it or seeing it through let's imagine that the lord placed it in your heart to start a business to start something you know as it relates to your purpose and your calling and just you doing something that he wants you to do and you started out you're probably excited you know you did your research and you got started and you've been going on for a while you know so after a couple of months the lord decides okay let me see what's going on with John's business. Let's see how Sarah is managing this thing that I told her to start two months ago. And he said, I'm coming down with a blessing. I want to bless her business. I want to bless the work of his hands. The Lord is, is, is thinking to himself that, okay, I want to bless the work of your hands. But when he comes down and he looks and he observes, you know the thing that he placed in your heart he realized that you're not doing it anymore he he's observing you he came down he came into the fields only to find you sitting under the juniper tree the lord came and he did not find you working you were not diligent you stopped doing the thing that the lord told you to do and if this is you this video is for you the lord is concerned about you and he wants you to return to the thing that he told you to do and he wants you to be consistent and faithful with it so many times we miss out on the blessing because we gave up too quickly i want you to know that you are on sight heaven is observing you god is observing you and he, he's watching you to see how you deal with the things that he has entrusted to you so when he decides okay i want to come down and i feel like blessing somebody's business today i feel like you know elevating somebody's work I, I feel like blessing the work of your hands today but when he comes he finds you sitting down complaining crying feeling discouraged and you know these things happen but when the lord comes down with the blessing in his hand to give to you he doesn't find you working and the lord wants us to fix that he wants us to be consistent he wants us to be diligent and persistent right he wants us to be faithful sometimes the breakthrough is right around the corner probably you've been you've been doing a particular thing for a number of years and you haven't seen any growth or any progress but what if you had continued what if you didn't stop what if you didn't give up your breakthrough was probably right around the corner so we have to learn to see things through you know we have to learn to be faithful with the things that the lord has given to us right so there are various reasons why someone would stop you know doing the thing that the lord has called him to do maybe you used to sing on the praise team and you stopped singing probably you used to play an instrument you stopped probably you used to you know teach sunday school probably you used to feed the homeless or something whatever it is that the lord told you to do and you stopped doing it because probably you weren't getting enough support you felt discouraged you know there are various reasons but we have to learn to be faithful we have to learn to be consistent and you know to to see things through right maybe you started a business and you know you are surprised that you know you're not getting the amount of support you thought you would have gotten especially from certain people you know maybe you you started something probably you started a youtube channel and you stopped because you weren't getting a lot of views whatever it is that he told you to start maybe you were concerned about what people are gonna say you know many different reasons 
I want to encourage you today. There's a scripture in Zechariah. It says, do not despise your small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Beloved, don't despise where you are right now. Don't look at it as a small thing. And though it might be a small thing, though you might be in your baby stages where, you know, that thing is concerned, where that business is concerned or whatever it is, don't despise it for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, right? You're on site. I said it earlier, you're on site. All of heaven is observing you. God wants to see how you handle, you know, the things that he's given to you, the different things that he's told you to start. He wants to see how faithful you can be with those little things, right? I believe that God is raising up a set of young people in our generation who will learn what it is to be faithful in spite of what whatever opposition or obstacle that they face. We have to learn to have a backbone as young people. We have to learn to be persistent in spite of whatever thing that life throws at us. We have to learn to stand. We have to learn to persevere and press on in spite of life's circumstances. And I believe he wants us to be faithful, beloved. The Lord wants us to be faithful. He wants to raise up mature people, people who are mature. People who won't just cry and, you know, suck their thumb as soon as something goes wrong. But he's, he wants to raise up a people who will serve him in spite of whatever they're going through. And we can see that this kind of behavior, this kind of character was portrayed in the Bible. You know, in the disciples and the apostles, the apostle Paul. Listen, I was talking to a friend last night and we were saying, you know, we're not really going through anything, you know. I mean... I don't want to trivialize the little things that we go through in our day-to-day -day lives. But the disciples, the apostles, they were being beaten. They were being persecuted. They were locked up in prison. They, they went through a lot, you know, and yet still they were faithful. They were faithful to the cause. And if we ever want to see, you know, what happened in Acts or in the Bible, in, in the early church days, we have to learn how to be faithful and persistent we have to learn how to press on in spite of, you know, the, the different things that we go through in life, right? We have to get to a place where there's a fight in us that we, we, we're going to, like we say to ourselves, you know, I'm going to contend. I'm going to contend for the faith. I'm going to contend for the gospel. And everything is just fighting against you. Opposition on this side, opposition on that side. And everything is just going wrong. But you say to yourself, I'm going to fight on. I'm going to press on. I'm going to be faithful no matter what. God is looking for those people in this hour. People who will person people who will keep going people who will keep on keeping on people who will keep praying even if they've been praying for years and they haven't seen the result of what they've been praying for god is looking for people who are consistent people who will be faithful the bible says that we ought to imitate god we must be imitators of god and god is a father who he doesn't start something and don't finish it. He's faithful. Whatever he starts, he's going to finish it. And if the Bible says we ought to imitate him, then it means we have to be just like him where faithfulness is concerned. Lord, help us. Help us to be faithful. Like I have my notes here, but this is just what I'm feeling in my spirit right now. The Lord is looking for people who will be faithful, especially in this generation. Like most of the older folks, they know how to be faithful. You know, but we young people, we start a job, you know, something is going wrong and we want to quit. We want to leave the job. We want to walk off the job. No, we cannot be like this in the body of Christ. So we have to learn to be faithful and consistent. I think that sometimes we focus too much on being perfect, you know, especially if you're a creative, you know. Whenever the Lord puts an idea in your heart to start something, to do something, we tend to focus a lot on, you know, being perfect. But the Lord is saying that he just wants you to start. Focus on being faithful instead of being perfect. And, it, and, and sometimes it is, 
It is with your obedience and you just doing the thing that the Lord has called you to do. He will perfect you. Like when I say perfect you, meaning he will perfect your gift, perfect your craft. You know, he'll give you opportunities on how you can improve yourself and so on. Don't focus on being perfect. Just focus on starting. Focus on obeying him. And in the process of doing what he told you to do, you'll see yourself improving. He'll help you to improve, right? So I'm going to tell you something about consistency that I don't think a lot of people know. Consistency attracts spirits. It can be the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of Satan. Consistency attracts spirits. When you do something long enough, the spirit of that thing that is responsible for that thing will eventually come along and help you. Consistency is a voice in the spirit realm. I'll say that again. Consistency is a voice in the spirit realm and I'll explain. It is not natural for us human beings to desire spiritual things because we live in a fallen world, right? And I'm just talking about human beings on a whole, generally, right? It is not natural for us to desire, you know, reading the Bible and praying and, you know, fasting. These are things that many Christians still struggle with, even though they've been in church for forever, right? That's because they have not trained their members to want the things of the Spirit. So they are still struggling with praying, still struggling with reading the Word, still struggling with fasting. Naturally, what we want, we want to spend the whole day on Instagram. We want to eat a lot of food. We want to, you know, idle talk and gossip, and, you know, do all these things that in the world, right? We, we only crave the things that's in our realm, in our world. So it's not natural for you to seek the Lord and pray and, you know. So that's why when you become a Christian, it's like it's even harder to serve God because then you have been born again. So now you have to reprogram yourself, you know, to want. You have to discipline yourself to want spiritual things right so let's say you start to discipline yourself to read the word that's you doing it in your own willpower and that's okay you know you say okay i'm gonna read my bible today and you actually do it tomorrow comes and you actually do it again the next day comes and you read your bible again when you do that for a period of time you are sending is like your 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 because as i said earlier consistency is a voice in the spirit so when you are consistently reading your bible every day the spirit of the lord will you know it's like you're 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 drawing god's attention and then his spirit will come and help you so now you find when the spirit of the lord comes along to help you to read the word you find that you don't have to drag yourself to read the bible you find that you have you're starting to have a desire for the word which is not natural. So you know the Holy Spirit is now helping you to do the thing that was once hard for you. Whenever you think about when reading the Bible and you say like, oh, I can't bother. I don't like to read the Bible. Then the Spirit of the Lord has not yet started to help you. You're still in the realm of doing it in your own willpower. And I mean, you have to start out there. You know, being disciplined is not wrong. It's not a bad thing. It's a place to start. But you're going to get to a place if you're disciplined long enough to do something long enough the spirit will come along and help you so as you continue to give yourself to the reading of the word every single day the spirit of the lord will begin to help you something that i've been learning is you need to become enemies with your flesh do not partner with your flesh because especially when it comes down to like reading the bible and praying right because if you follow your flesh, you will not read your Bible and you will not pray. But if you tell yourself, you put your flesh on the subject and I say, listen, we're going to read the word today. I'm going to read a chapter today. I'm going to read two chapters out of this book today. And you do it. It's only a matter of time and you continue to do it. It's only a matter of time. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you and help you. And you find that you will be reading the Bible for hours. You, you say you wanted to read two chapters and you find yourself all the way in another book and it's like you did it effortlessly that's because the spirit of the lord is helping you so if you're struggling to read your bible you need to you need to tell yourself speak to yourself speak to your flesh 
put your flesh on the subjection and discipline yourself to start reading the word. And it's only a matter of time for the spirit of the Lord to come along and start helping you. Then you find that you'll start to have a desire, a longing for the word. David said it, my flesh is longing for you. Like how can your flesh be longing for God? Naturally, our flesh longs for, as I said, the things of this world. But David trained himself. He trained himself to want the things of God. And it was only a matter of time where it's like the spirit was now drawing him. You know, when you train yourself to like pray, you know, you discipline yourself for a long time to, to pray and to spend time with God. There will come a time in your life when probably you get busy. But because your body is now programmed, your body is now trained, your mind, your spirit has been disciplined and has been trained, you find that there's a natural drawing to the secret place. There's a natural drawing, like you'll be sitting down on your phone and you say, you know what, I just have this strange feeling, I feel like I want to go read my Bible. And it's not that you are subjected to your feelings and, you know, because I feel like doing it, I feel like, no. But there's just this longing, this craving that's coming from you. That you desire the things of God, right? It's the same thing with bad habits. So on the other hand, I want to give an example of, you know, a bad thing like stealing. So if you get up every day and you steal, you steal a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Probably you steal twice a day or you steal three times a day. And you do this consistently for weeks. You're sending, it's like you're sending a uh, 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 invitation to the spirit of stealing to come and take a hold of you and there's a scripture that i'm going to read um later down that explains this you know you get up every day out of your own willpower the spirit of stealing has not yet attached itself onto you but it's you stealing is that's just your own willpower that's just your nature coming out that's just your flesh so it's just a bad habit that you have right and i said it in, a, in another video that the enemy only takes advantage of the things that we we fail to deal with in our flesh or the things that we refuse to deal with in our flesh so if you have a problem with lying if you have a problem with stealing and you don't allow the holy spirit to deal with it the enemy is only just going to come and take advantage and pull the strings and be in control of you so you know you steal consistently for weeks it's only a matter of time the spirit that is responsible for stealing is gonna come and occupy your body and occupy your being so now when that spirit attaches itself onto you you're no longer stealing twice a day you're stealing every moment of the day you go somewhere and it's like your body is just glitching all over just to steal something another example is that probably you go when the spirit now takes you over the spirit of stealing takes you over remember now you know you're no longer doing this off your own will. You're no longer doing this off your own ability. The spirit is now in control of you. You can go into a room and everybody knows that, okay, here comes a thief, you know, and they hide the money. They hide it well. They hide, you know, the jewelry properly. Like they put it up somewhere that you would never find it. But because that spirit is, 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 is helping you, the spirit will literally tell you where to find the money right and it's the same thing with the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord helps us to do things that it, it it goes beyond our natural ability our human will and our human strength can only go so far but when the spirit of the lord takes you over when the spirit of the lord is helping a man he can go beyond the natural right and it's the same thing with an evil spirit right you can only go so far probably when you were stealing off your own will you were able to steal a thousand dollars but when the spirit of stealing comes along on you you're able to you know and of course you know it's only a matter of time you're going to be destroyed if you're you know doing something like this so if this is you i pray that you will get delivered i pray that you get delivered so what i'm really trying to say is that we start out by doing things from our own willpower, from our own strength. But if you do something long enough, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, the spirit that is responsible for that thing that you're doing will come along and help you, right? So if you're consistently doing something bad, you need to check it and you need to break it. You need to stop doing it, right? 
and ask the Lord to help you to stop doing it. If you're doing something good, you probably want to look into your life and say, okay, what is that good thing that I want to train myself to do so that the spirit of the Lord can come upon me and help me to do this thing more diligently, more, you know, faithfully, you know? So, yeah. So I really want to emphasize this part. Whatever, you're, whatever you consistently give yourself to, whatever habit, good or bad, habit that you consistently give yourself to you will become a slave to that thing there's a scripture in romans chapter 6 i'm going to read a few verses that really um confirms everything that i just said a while ago so paul was talking to us in romans and he was saying that we are no longer slaves to sin but we are slaves to righteousness so just as how you gave your members to sin, to do wrong things, it's the same way Paul is saying you need to now reprogram yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit to do godly things. So verse 16, he says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience which leads to righteousness verse 18 says you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness verse 19 i'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations so he was saying let me talk to you in your in your terms so you can understand me just as you used to offer yourself as slaves to impurity to ever increasing wickedness so he's saying, just as how you used to sit down and listen to Popcorn and Vibes Cartel. He's saying, no. So now, offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. So, just as how you used to sit down and listen to Vibes Cartel, it's the same way you can train yourself, discipline yourself to consistently listen to gospel, godly Christian music. Godly, godly music. Okay? The same way you used to you know sit down and you know you know all the things you used to do out there when you were out in the world you have to know reprogram your mind train yourself discipline yourself with the help of the holy spirit and consistently give yourself give your members give your hands your feet your eyes your lips your ears your whole body to righteousness become a slave to righteousness you know, it just goes back to the scripture in Zechariah where it says the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. You have to start somewhere, right? In terms of disciplining yourself and training yourself to do right. And as I said, it's only if you consistently do this thing for a period of time, you know, it's only a matter of time for the spirit of the Lord to come along and help you. So if the Lord sees that you're making an effort to stop listening to ungodly music. You're making effort to stop, you know, having certain conversations and stop doing certain things. His spirit is going to help you. Because remember I said, our human power, our human will, our own strength, our own ability can only take us so far. But when we aren't able to continue the journey, then the spirit of the Lord will come in and help us. It's not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord, right? But... You have to start somewhere. You have to make an effort. So now, I want to speak to those of you who you're on the edge of giving up. You've probably been faithful in doing what the Lord has told you to do or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. And you just, you're just, you feel like you're on the edge. I want to speak to you. There's a scripture in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. It says, do not grow weary in well-doing for in due season, you will reap if you do not give up. And that's in another translation, right? I'm going to read it again. Don't grow weary in well-doing, in doing good. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not, if you don't give up. And as I said earlier, the Lord laid it on my heart that many of us, we miss out on the blessing because we gave up too early. Don't give up. Don't grow weary in doing good. For in due season, in due season, says the Lord, and this is Bible, this is Bible. In due season, you're going to reap what you've sown. If you do not give up, you can only reap it if you don't give up. So yeah, I want to speak to your spirit. Whatever it is that you're contemplating on giving up and stopping, don't give up. 
don't give up don't give up you are robbing yourself of the blessing of the lord when you quit when you give up too early don't give up don't give up continue keep pressing keep going keep believing keep trusting god keep reading the word keep praying god is going to come through for you he is faithful keep praying keep believing keep trusting keep doing good even if nobody sees what you're doing even if nobody acknowledges you even if it seems as if nothing is changing nothing is happening nothing is growing keep going we as young people we have to learn to have a backbone we have to learn tenacity we have to learn to persevere and i want to encourage you encourage you as i encourage myself keep going keep going keep going don't stop you can only win you will only reap the blessing if you keep going if only you make it to the finish line beloved don't give up don't give up don't give up all of heaven is cheering for you the lord is watching you and he's here to help you don't give up keep being faithful keep being consistent he will help you he will help you look to the hills from whence cometh your help your help cometh from the lord glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord father i pray for anyone who is watching right now i'm not finished but i pray for anyone who is watching right now lord and they feel like giving up jesus i pray that your spirit will help them lord god to keep going give them the grace to keep persevering to keep pressing to keep going father i pray that you give such person tenacity let there be a fight and a determination in their spirit to keep going no matter what shatara give let there be a fight in their spirit oh god to keep going in the name of jesus keep going beloved keep going you will reap what you have sown in due season if you faint not if you faint not glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord i believe the lord is going to help us something that i've been declaring for probably about a month now that god is my help I've been declaring it and it's like one of the things that I've learned is that whatever you declare God to be, that's exactly who he's going to be. So if you just train yourself, discipline yourself, practice saying God is my help, I promise you, you're going to see the help of the Lord. Even in the little things, God is my help. And I just feel his help in this moment, not just for me, but for you who are watching. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just really feel like the Lord is going to help you. And you're going to see the help of the Lord more than ever. Hallelujah. I'm wrapping up. This is the final thing I want to just say to you. There's a scripture in Luke chapter 18. And Jesus was giving a parable about prayer. So I'm going to read from verse 1 to 8. And I'm reading in the Amplified Version. Now Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make the point that at all times they ought to pray. And not to give up and lose heart. Saying... In a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and who had no respect for man. There was a desperate widow in that city and she kept coming to him saying, Give me justice and legal protection from my adversary. Adversary, adversary, adversary. For a time, he would not. But later he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, Yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will be an intolerable annoyance and she will wear me out. Then the Lord said, Jesus speaking here, he said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not our just God, will not our heavenly father basically defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones? who cry out to him day and night he will he delay sorry will he delay in providing justice on their behalf he's asking a question i tell you verse 8 that he will defend and avenge them quickly however when the son of man comes will he find this kind of persistent persistent faith on the earth glory to god i want to emphasize mostly on verse 7 and 8 while I was preparing, while I was reading this, something came to me. It takes faith to be persistent. It takes faith to be faithful. It takes faith to be consistent. 
you have been praying for this particular thing for so long and you don't see any sign of rain you don't see any sign of a change coming but if you if you if you have faith and you believe that god is going to come through for you then that faith is going to fuel your persistence in prayer faith is going to fuel your consistency in believing a lot of us we lose heart and we give up because of a lack of faith and because the reason why we lack faith is because we're not in the word the word of God says faith commit by hearing, by hearing the word of God. If you want to activate faith, you have to get into the word. You have to speak the word, speak what God is speaking. You have to align yourself to the trusted truth of God, which is the word, right? Faith fuels persistency. So as I said, I want to just emphasize on verse 7 and verse 8 again. It says, and will not our heavenly father our just god defend and avenge his own people i'm paraphrasing right will not our god defend and avenge us those of us who cry out to him day and night right i tell you that he will defend and avenge them quickly however when jesus comes back will he find this persistent faith in the earth beloved i want to encourage you today don't give up keep praying keep praying keep praying keep believing keep trusting and i'm speaking to myself as well keep believing will not our heavenly father come through for us yes he will but we must be persistent we must be faithful in prayer keep praying keep praying Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. We must persevere. We must press on, beloved. You are not alone. God is with you. God will help you. He will help us. But we must press on. Don't get weary in doing good. Don't get weary in doing ministry. Don't get weary in doing your business because nobody sees you. Not because you're not known and nobody knows you means you should stop. Keep going. Keep going. Do not despise your small beginnings because the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Keep going, beloved. Even if nobody knows your name, keep going. Keep going. There's a reward for you if you faint not. You will feel discouraged here and there, but whenever you do, do not partner with that feeling. Get into the word of God and find out what God says and, and speak it over yourself. Preach the word of God over yourself until that feeling disappears and until your emotions and your mind and your whole being comes in alignment with the truth of God. Keep going. Keep pressing. I pray for you that you will have a fight in your spirit, that there will be a determination in your spirit, that you will contend, that you will contend. You will not run away from any devil. You will not run away from any obstacle. You will not back down because things get hard. In the name of Jesus, I speak this over over you i speak this over you that you will not run but you will stand you will stand you will press on you will persevere you will endure in the name of jesus you will develop tenacity hallelujah glory to god glory to god blessed are you who has the god of jacob as your help he's your help he's your help hallelujah 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 the Lord is our help. Young people, young adults, adults, whoever is watching, God is our help. He's our refuge and our fortress. Let us trust in him. Keep pressing. God will not fail you. He will not fail you. And I'm telling you from experience and from what I've read in the Bible, we must get into the word. If you don't know who God is, get into the word and see his dealings with humanity. He never fails. He never fails. If you continue to be obedient and consistent and faithful with what the Lord has given you, with the task that he's given unto you, he will reward you. Be faithful, beloved. Be faithful. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God bless you. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. God bless you.